All right. So repeating the cat cow until your back is warmed up. And then coming back to neutral, we'll tuck the toes. We're going to lift our hips coming up and back into a downward facing dog. So pedaling back and forth a few times, stretching out the toes, working the ankles and the calves, circling the ankles a few times in each direction, doing that on each side. And then coming into your full expression of downward dog. So fingers spread wide. The palms are flat. The feet hip distance, heels reaching toward the ground, and the chest draws back towards the heels. The breath is still deep, rhythmic, and slow, making the sound with each breath. Our next exhale, let's walk our feet to the hands, coming into the rag doll. Dangling here for a moment. And then with our next inhale, let's gradually roll up to standing, stacking ears, shoulders, hips, knees, and heels. And we're going to begin with a few rounds of sun salutation. So our feet touching toward the front edge of our mat. We inhale and draw the arms up, touch palms, and lift the heart. We exhale, we bring the hands through the heart center as we come forward and down, placing the palms flat, bending the knees as much as necessary, letting the neck relax. The next inhale, we come to our fingertips, lengthening the spine. And as you exhale, we plant the hand and step to the top of a push-up. Ears, shoulders, hips, knees, and heels all align. Okay? Now from here, um, let's drop the knees for this first push-up. Okay? So we're going to focus on our shoulders and elbows. So with the shoulders, I want you to look at me. See this? This is collapsing and this is active. Collapse, that's what we, we don't want that, active. So I'm actively pressing the ground away from me. I'm going to keep that activation as I exhale, lower down halfway. Elbows hug my ribs, take a breath here. And then with the next exhale, I come down onto my belly, releasing the tops of the feet into the mat and pressing the toes together. On the next inhale, press into your hands, lift the head, neck, and chest, but leave the navel on the ground for now. Toes pressing together, tops of the feet pressing into the ground. Neck, a natural extension of the spine. Shoulders down away from the ears. Exhale, coming back down. We tuck the toes, press back tabletop first, and then downward facing dog. Let's take a couple of breaths in downward dog. And from here, we're going to come to our toes with pinny hands as we exhale, step, jump, or float to the front edge of the mat. The next inhale, we come all the way up to standing back bend. Exhale, forward fold, coming forward and down. Good. On the next inhale, half lift pose. And then we exhale to the top of the push up once again. Okay, so whether you put your knees down or not is largely a function of whether you can um, maintain the integrity of the posture when you do so. So the knees up, I come down halfway. I want it to look like that. All right, then inhale. Straighten arms and legs. Knees are off the ground, so the legs are active. It's not this, I'm not collapsing into it. Active, pressed up, okay? Upward dog. And then from there, I come back to my downward facing dog. Good, coming to the toes as we inhale, looking between the hands. Exhale to the front edge of the mat. Inhale, standing back bend up and back. 
Exhale, forward fold, emptying the lungs. Good. Inhale to half lift. And then this time, exhale right to the bottom of your push up. Inhale to upward facing dog. And then exhale to the downward facing dog. All right, good. So now I'm going to have you do a few rounds of half breath transitions. Okay? So I'm not going to do them with you because it's extra hard to do them and teach or talk at the same time. So let's go ahead and come to the toes as we inhale. As you exhale, you're going to step, jump, or float to the front edge of your mat. Then with the next inhale, you're coming all the way up to standing back bend. As you exhale, coming forward and down, placing the palms flat on the ground. With the inhale, you're going to come to the half lift, Ardha Uttanasana, fill the lungs there. As you exhale, step, jump, or float to the bottom of your push-up, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale to the upward facing dog, Urtva Mukha Shanasana. And then exhale, straight back to down dog. If you're able, put in a push-up if you like, or use tabletop to make that transition easier. Inhaling to the toes, filling the lungs there. As you exhale, you're going to step, jump, or float to the front edge of your mat. With the inhale, you're coming all the way up and back to standing back bend. With the exhale, coming forward and down, again, placing palms flat, bending the knees. Inhale, coming to half lift, filling the lungs. Exhale, bottom of the push-up, Chaturanga Dandasana. The inhale to upward facing dog, Urtva Mukha. And then exhale straight back to the downward facing dog, Adha Mukha. Let's do one more as you inhale and fill the lungs, looking between your hands. Exhale, step, jump, or float to the front edge of the mat. With your inhale, you come up and back, standing back bend. With the exhale, you come forward and down, emptying the lungs there. With the inhale, coming to half lift. And then exhale, bottom of your push-up. Inhale to the upward facing dog, filling the lungs there. And then exhale straight back to the downward dog. Let's take a few breaths in our downward facing dog. Now, that can be quite vigorous. And so if you are out of breath, uh, what I'd like to invite you to do is to take a child pose for a few breaths. Catch your breath. Okay, you might miss some of the class, but if you're listening, hopefully you'll be able to... Um, catch up or catch on to whatever we might be doing if you aren't able to move on right away. For me, it's more important that you catch your breath than you know you do the postures perfectly or anything like that. Okay, so we still wanna use breath awareness, dirga, ujjayi, and um, svidati. So hopefully we've got all those techniques still running here, okay? All right. So from here, we're going to come to our toes, look between the hands, and with the next exhale, we'll make our way to the front edge of the mat. So our feet are joined together. Our knees are going to bend, and as we inhale, we'll come up into a chair pose. And I read somewhere once that the squat is quite possibly the perfect exercise. And in yoga, this is our squat, Utkatasana. So last week, we held it for a nice long time. Let's see, maybe we can break our record. I wasn't timing it or anything, so who knows? But we're just going to sink down into it. I already did this once today in a class I taught earlier. So a place of contention for many people is the shoulders. So feel free to experiment with arm position to find what works for you. The, IT, the idea is, again, the arms are up and back, keeping that chest open. We don't need to tense the face here. We can let the face relax. Let's see if maybe we can take it a little bit further, working those thighs, working those legs, building that tapasya, that heat, that intensity of our practice. Okay, like I said last week, I think a lot of you think that I have, have you guys hold chair pose that I probably couldn't hold it that long. Uh, well, here I am. Okay, I did it last week. Happy to do it with you again. Okay, so we're breathing. Let's keep the shoulders relaxed, face relaxed. Deep breaths in and out. Good. Exhale, forward fold, let's release. And then we're going to inhale to our half lift. 
Then we'll make our way to the bottom of the push-up. Again, making our way to the downward facing dog. Okay, downward dog, let's bring our feet to touch. We'll inhale the right leg up and back. Okay, let's bend the knee, open up that hip a little bit, move that leg around, stretch our side a bit. And then from there, we're gonna come into three-legged dog proper. So that leg is straight, the foot is flexed, and the hip is down. Okay, so we're trying to level the right hip with the left hip without lowering that leg. Take a nice deep breath here. As we exhale, place that foot between the hands. Drop that back heel. Inhale to warrior one, Vidhavadrasana. Okay, the front foot and knee point straight ahead. The knee lunges directly over the heel. If I drew a line from my front heel, it would intersect the back one at the heel or the arch. That back foot is planted on the ground, so my heel is not up. If it's up, it's called a crescent lunge. It's a little bit of a different posture. Okay, back leg is straight, but I'm drawing that left hip forward. Arms are straight up and back. Breath is deep, rhythmic, and slow. From here, let's take a deep breath in. Exhale, bottom of push-up. Let's make our way back to the downward facing knot. And then we'll do the other side. So feet are touching, inhale, left leg up and back. All right, let's bend that knee, let's open up a little bit. And then we'll lower that hip and leg. Okay, square off as best as we can. This is a good time to notice if we're doing our best at this moment. Is this our personal best right now? Because it changes from moment to moment, and that's okay. From here, we'll take a nice deep breath. Exhale, place that foot between the hands. Drop the back heel. Inhale, warrior one on the other side. Okay, so again, we're just always doing the best that we can moment to moment. Some days that might look like child pose, right? And that's okay. But one of the things we wanna do in yoga is believe in our innate strength. And I'm not talking about physical strength, but it does affect your physical experience, your physical strength. So then rather than believing things like I'm old or I'm weak or I'm out of shape, why don't you believe that you can hold this no problem? Of course, if you got a medical issue, you deal with it. But see if you can just feel your strength here. Okay, you're a warrior, you're strong. Good, let's take a deep breath. We're gonna exhale, bottom of our push up. And let's make our way back to the downward dog. All right, good. So, as usual, we will do a few rounds of the half breath transition, okay? So, coming to the toes, inhale, exhale to the front edge of the mat. Empty the lungs there. Bend your knees, inhale, chair pose, take a full breath in. Exhale to forward fold, Uttanasana, okay? Then you're gonna inhale to half lift and exhale to the bottom of your push-up. Inhaling to upward facing dog, filling the lungs completely and exhale to downward facing dog. Now inhale the right foot forward and raise your torso for warrior one. Then exhale to the bottom of a push-up, low plank position. Drop the knees if necessary. Inhale, upward facing dog, or you could do cobra. Exhale, push-up, tabletop, or straight back to down dog. Inhale the left leg forward, raising the torso for warrior one. Exhale, low plank position. Then inhale to upward facing dog, and exhale back to downward dog. Good, inhaling to the toes, let's fill the lungs there. And then we exhale to the front edge of our mat. With the inhale, we come into chair pose. Make sure you feel those legs working. Exhale to forward fold, try not to rush. Inhale to half lift, fill the lungs. Exhale, bottom of your push-up, Chaturanga Dandasana. Then inhale to upward facing dog and exhale straight back to your downward dog. 
From downward dog, inhale the right foot forward, raise your torso, warrior one. Exhale, bottom of your push-up, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale to upward facing dog, and exhale back to the downward dog. Inhale the left leg forward, warrior one, come right on up. And then exhale, low plank position. Inhale, up dog, and exhale, down dog. Inhaling to the toes, fill the lungs there, and exhale to the front edge of your mat. Inhale, chair pose, Utkatasana. Exhale, forward fold, Uttanasana. Inhale to half lift, and exhale, bottom of your push-up, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward facing dog, and then exhale right back to downward dog. Inhale the right foot, warrior one, come on up. And then exhale, bottom of your push-up. Inhale, upward facing dog. And exhale back to downward dog. Other side, inhale left, Vidavadrasana, warrior one. And exhale, bottom of the push-up. Inhale to upward dog. And exhale back to downward dog. Good. I've lost count if that was two or three, but we'll say that's enough for today, whether it was two or three. Okay, regardless. So let's take a few breaths here. Make sure checking in on our breath that it is deep, it is rhythmic, it is slow. We aren't hyperventilating, we aren't panting. The breath might have quickened, that's natural, but we still want it to be as deep and as slow as we can manage given what we are doing physically. Okay, so doing the best you can with that. All right. So from here, we're going to move into a flow to open up our groin. So what I'd like you to do is um, go ahead and inhale the right leg up and back. And you're going to exhale as you put that foot between your hands. And then we'll inhale to a warrior one. And then we'll exhale open to a warrior two. Okay. So now warrior two, I want that front foot and knee pointing straight ahead as before. The front foot again intersects the back at the heel of the arch. The arms, you reach your fingertips out and the arms go parallel. You don't need to do this though. Okay, so let those shoulders relax down away from the ears, gazes over the front fingertips. Okay, from here we'll inhale up into this position, the stupa. Stupa is pretty much neutral, so don't expect to feel a lot in that position. In fact, if you did, probably something wrong. Exhale to goddess. Okay, let's have our knees and our toes facing in the same direction. See if you can get your knees directly over your heels, okay? And then the arms basically mirror what you're doing with the legs, more or less. From here, we'll inhale back up to the stupa. And then as we exhale, come into a warrior two facing the other direction. Again, reaching those fingertips out away from one another. Okay, from here, I'm going to inhale into a reverse warrior. Okay, so I'm stretching into my side, my waist. This hand, which is going to be your right hand, it can rest on the leg here. You can reach around your back. This arm is reaching up and back, trying to help elongate the left waist. Good. From here, we'll come back up to our warrior two. On an exhale, and then we inhale up to stupa, exhale to goddess. Now we begin to flow through it more fluidly. Okay, coming into a warrior two, inhale reverse warrior, exhale warrior two, inhale to stupa, temple, exhale to goddess. Inhale back up to temple, exhale to warrior two. Good. Inhale to temple. Exhale to the goddess position. Good. Inhale back up. Temple. Exhale to warrior two. 
Now from here, I'd like you to take a nice inhale as you reach up and back. And then as you exhale, you can come forward into this position. It's called an extended side angle. Okay, so resting one elbow on the leg, the other arm reaches away from the heel. You're trying to create one line of energy, rolling that left hip and shoulder back. Okay. Now, if it's accessible to you, I'd like you to reach under your leg and bind the leg with your arms. Okay. You can use a strap, but if you can't do this, don't worry. Just stay where you were. Okay. Then roll that shoulder back. Now, if you are able to, from here, you know, step forward and then begin standing up. The leg comes with you as you come into what's called Bird of Paradise. Okay, so I'm gonna try and turn so you can see me. Whoops. All right, so coming up and then beginning to straighten the leg. You see my leg doesn't go very straight, but ideally the leg would straighten completely. Okay, that's gonna be based on your hamstring flexibility. Now, if you can't do that, what I'll have you do instead is you will step forward from where you are Stand up and then take a tree pose, okay? So bringing that foot to the inside of the thigh instead, okay? And again, we'll take a few breaths there in tree or bird of paradise. Then with your next exhale, I'd like you to release whichever pose you're in so that everything relax. Then with the next inhale, arms up, touch palms, lift the heart, and exhale as you come forward and down. Inhale, half lift, and then exhale to the bottom of your push-up, making your way back to the downward dog. Okay, so I'm just going to turn this direction so I'm not always doing the same side. Okay, from here we do the same thing. Bring the opposite leg up, bring it forward. Inhale to our warrior one, and then we exhale to our warrior two. Let's take a few breaths here. So again, really working into that pose. You're at your edge when you're feeling the posture. Okay, so I could do all the alignment cues properly like this. Everything I said is right, but I'm not really feeling it, okay? Now, you might hear some teachers say, oh, this thigh needs to approach parallel to the ground. Well, that's nice if you got it, but you may never get there. A lot of people never do. So what kind of pose is it when most people can't do it right? For me, that's, that's not what yoga is about. Okay, that's gymnastics or dance or something like that. So we're at our edge where we're feeling it. Then we're going to inhale up to our stupa position. Okay, from there... We'll exhale to the goddess. Let's try and get everything where it is now while we're moving slowly. Okay. Knees and toes face in the same direction. Knees over the heels. Good. Let's inhale back to our stupa, temple. And we'll exhale again to warrior two. Inhale, reverse or peaceful warrior. Good. The legs stay the same, but now we're stretching into that right waist. From here, we come back up, and then inhale, stupa, and exhale to goddess. Inhale, goddess, and exhale to warrior two. Inhale, reverse, or peaceful warrior. Good, exhale, warrior two. Inhale to stupa, or temple, exhale, the goddess. Inhale, temple position, and exhale, warrior two. Inhale, reverse or peaceful warrior. Exhale, warrior two. Inhale, stupa. Exhale to goddess. Inhale to stupa, and then exhale to warrior two. Inhale, reverse or peaceful warrior. And then exhale to extended side angle. Okay, so we're in our extended side angle. Again, my screen keeps 
freezing up. So I'm going to, you're going to see me come over here from time to time to unfreeze it. So that right shoulder is rolling back. We extend the fingertips away from the heel. So imagine pressing your heel into the ground at the same time you extend through the fingertips, rolling that shoulder back, looking up if possible. You tend to move in the direction you look in. So in yoga, we want to look in the direction that we're trying to open a posture, okay? Or if we're trying to close or we're trying to forward fold, then we want to look in that direction. All right, from here, if you can bind, go ahead. If you can't, it's not a problem. You can stay right there until you transition into your tree, which you're welcome to do at any time. From bird to parrot, uh, from bound, bound uh, the bind of the pose, we're going to step forward. And then as you're ready, slowly standing up into your bird of paradise. Now, if, if, you, if it falls apart on you, that's fine. Okay? What I want you to notice is where does it fall apart on you? And I want you to start paying attention to that moment right before it falls apart. So, you know, maybe today you're just a little off balance. Maybe normally you can do it. But this is a pose that you've tried many times or you've done it many times and it seems to always fall apart at a certain point. I want you to really notice when that happens, okay? What is, what's challenging about it or what is the difficulty? Can you bring some awareness to that? All right, so let's go ahead and release our leg and our arm, whether we're in tree or we're in bird of paradise. And just take a breath there. And then inhale, arms up, touch palms, lift the heart. And exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. And exhale, bottom of your push-up, making your way back to the downward facing dog. All right. So normally I would teach some arm balances with this, but uh, with the difficulty of not being in person, I'm not going to teach any arm balances today. Okay? It's one thing we can look forward to uh, getting back together in person. Um, arm balances are really good for us, but uh, it, just not being able to see you guys, I'd rather not teach that. So let's go ahead and come down onto our belly. We're going to lay flat. I call that the crocodile pose. You just rest your forehead on the back of your hands, okay? And relaxing there, just take a few breaths, noticing the depth and the quality of your breathing. Are you still using the techniques? Uh, dirga, Ujjayi, and Samabriti. All right, good. So let's go ahead and do some back bends next. This is a sequence of back bends that I like to do quite often. These are all symmetrical back bends. And you might say they're the three, they're three archetypal back bends. Each one brings different challenges and um, advantages um, for our practice. Okay, so the first one is going to be a Shalabhasana locust pose. So I'd like you to just lay down on your belly. Your arms are at your sides, palms down, placing the mouth, chin, or forehead on the ground. Your legs just extend back behind you parallel. You're going to exhale completely there. And then with the next inhale, I want you to pick everything up that you can pick up. Okay, so the arms, the legs, the head, the thighs, everything is lifting up. Now the shoulders are away from the ears, right? We can extend energy out through our fingertips and our toes, but we don't want to tense too much. And we're lifting, just using those muscles in the posterior chain. Breathing here, face is relaxed. Again, the muscles might start to tremble. That's okay. That's actually good for them. It's not a bad sign. Breathing here, relaxing here into the intensity. And then exhale, let's come back down and we'll place the left hand over the right hand as we bring our forehead to the back of the hands. All 
from there, let's go ahead and take a look at Cobra Bhujangasana. So let's bring the feet together. Big toes are pressing into one another and the tops of feet are pressing into the ground gently. We bring our hands alongside our chest, palms down. Now let's draw the elbows in. So we don't want them flared out, we draw them in. Shoulders are down away from the ears. Exhale here. And then as we inhale, let's press up first to where we did at the beginning. So the elbows are bent. And then if you feel okay, you can straighten your arms completely. The pelvis might come off the ground there. All right, that's pretty deep back bend. If you want to go deeper, you can walk your hands back toward your hips, going even further. But again, the back needs to feel good. And then for the deepest back bend, you bend your knees and bring the crown of the head towards the soles of your feet. As you can see, I'm nowhere near touching my feet to my head, but that doesn't really matter. I'm getting a different stretch and I'm working my body differently than I would if I were here. And okay, so it's really about how it changes the experience. So taking a few breaths here. And then we'll inhale, straighten those legs and exhale as we come back down the right hand over the left hand, the forehead on the back of the hands. Let's go ahead and relax. All right, good. Now from here, we're going to transition into Dhanurasana floor bow. So if you can't do this for some reason, please repeat one of the last postures. Okay, one of the last back bends. Otherwise, reaching back, grabbing your feet, ankles, or shins. All right, the legs are again parallel. The feet can flex or point. And from here, we begin kicking up and back. And then once you're there, if you can, rock back and forth on your belly. Good. Let's take one more breath. And then exhale, coming down. We'll bring the left hand over the right hand and the forehead on the back of the hands. Close your eyes. Breathe relax, and feel, okay? Deep breaths in and out, slow and rhythmic as always. All right, very good. Now from here, I'd like you to bring your arms out like wings you're still laying on the ground. And what you'll do is uh, bend your knees, have your feet in the air. You're just gonna drop your feet from side to side. And what you'll find is your hips rock gently from side to side as you do that. Okay, and that will help your back release a little bit. Now do as many of those as you like. Okay, take your time with it, there's no rush. And then when you're done with that, I'd like you to press back into a child pose, okay? So you're just taking a few breaths in child pose. Good. From there, let's go ahead and inhale up into a tabletop position. And then from tabletop, we will take a uh, plank position, okay? Now in plank, what we'd like to do is extend our right arm out in front of us and lift our left leg up. And then we exhale and put them down. And then we inhale, lift them up. Exhale down. Good. A few more times. Inhale up. Exhale down. Two more times. Inhale and exhale. One more time, lifting and holding. Hips are down. 
there is balance happening here. So you're trying to balance and stabilize both halves of your body. Reaching the toes and the fingers away from one another. Let's take one more breath here. And then exhale back to child pose. Relax. Good. Let's inhale back into our tabletop and then we'll take our plank position. Now again, one of the big things with planks is this. Okay, so that, that's more like a down dog. Want to keep those hips down as best as we can. All right, so from here, I lift my left arm, my right toes. Good, exhale down. Again, inhale, lift and exhale down. Three more times. Two more. And one more time. Lifting and holding. It's harder to hold, right, as we repeat the movement. Good. Exhale, child pose. So again, we very often don't appreciate or like things that we're not good at. Uh, we might feel, I think mostly because of how we're educated, uh, we think that being bad at something means we're bad, um, you know, that we, we have to pass some kind of test, we have to be good at everything. You really don't want to think of your yoga in that way. So that was not easy for me. I sucked at it. I was putting my hand and leg down. But what's happening is my nervous system, my brain, my body were all being stimulated in good ways. So it doesn't matter if I'm putting my hands down, if I'm wobbling, if it's difficult. That's actually a good, good thing for me. The only way it could be bad is if I actually hurt myself doing that. But even if I'm tripping all over the place, I'm falling, I'm... Uh, not able to hold postures, all of that is stimulating me in a good way. Okay, so keep that in mind. This is not about perfection. It's called a yoga practice for a reason. Okay, so let's go ahead and move into a little shoulder work next. What I'd like you to do is just bring your right arm straight out to the right. You're still laying down. You're on your belly. Okay, so come forward onto your belly and bring your right arm straight out to the right. Okay, so not in child pose, you come lay flat. Okay, so you're laying down on your belly, your right arm is to the right. Now, carefully, I want you to begin to roll toward that arm. If you are able, you bend the knees, place the feet on the ground, the knees point up. The left hand is in front of my chest, pressing my left shoulder back, okay? I can hold my head up or rest it on the ground. Feeling that stretch through the front of the arm and the shoulder. Good. Exhale. Back onto the belly. Okay, I'm going to move my mat over a little bit so I have room to do the other side. Okay, so the left arm to the left, palm down. And I begin to roll toward that arm. Bending the knees, I place feet on the ground, knees point up. Again, this hand is in front of the chest, pressing into the ground, shoulder back, stretching the front of that chest and shoulder. I actually feel this in my serratus, which is right in here. So that's interesting that I feel it there. But that just goes to show how all the muscles are interconnected with fascia. So when we stretch one muscle, some other muscles stretch as well. All right, good. Let's come back down onto our belly from there. And then we'll take a cattail next. So what I'd like you to do is take your left leg out to the left. It can be straight or bent. And prop your head up on the hand. Okay, I'm just going to turn around because maybe it'll be easier to see me that way, okay? 
So you're here like this, bringing that leg back. You bend the knee, reach back, grab the foot, pull the heel in towards your buttocks. Now laying the left shoulder back, you take a deeper twist. So we're both stretching the front of the thigh and we are also twisting the spine simultaneously. Okay, again, from time to time, I have to get up and sort of wake the computer back up. So don't worry about me. I want you to stay in the posture for a few more breaths. All right, let's unwind from that cattail back onto our belly. This time we'll take the right leg out to the right, pop our head up on the left hand and elbow, take the left leg, move it back away from the right leg, you'll bend the knee, reach back, grab the foot, pull the heel in towards your buttocks. And then laying the shoulder back toward the ground, hopefully deepening the twist as well. So stretching the front of the thigh and also twisting the spine simultaneously. In this last section of the class, I'm trying to work the spine and also stretch the muscles in the hips. Um, so, so create a very sort of well-rounded practice. And since classes are relatively short these days, I try and pack as much into one posture as I can. All right, let's unwind from our cattail, come back onto our belly, and let's go ahead and press back into the seat, and then come up to seated with the legs out in front of us. Okay, so I'm just gonna face this direction as I think it might be easier to see me, but you orient yourself what, however makes sense on your mat. Okay, we're gonna start with a Janu Shivshasana I'm probably not going to mirror because it, it gets super confusing um, over the internet. I'm not sure exactly what you're seeing versus what I'm seeing. All right, so right leg is straight, left foot's the inside of the thigh. Let's round those sits bones. You can move them back if that's helpful. Sitting nice and tall, reaching through the crown of the head. Again, let's relax those shoulders away from the ears. Then we'll inhale, arms up and exhale as we come forward and down, grabbing the big toe or the edges of the foot. Good. Extending on the next inhale as you exhale, bring your forehead toward your knee, coming into Janu Shishasana for the next few breaths. All right, now what I'd like you to do is take the right hand and grab the inside of your right foot. Take your left hand and grab the outside of your right foot. And then use the arms to roll that left shoulder back as you come into Pavita Janushasana. I want you to feel it in your left waist and the inside of your right thigh. Good. From there, we're going to roll forward and we'll inhale and sit up. Now we'll take what's called a deer pose. Okay. So what I'd like you to do is take this foot out a little further and you'll bend this knee like so. Okay. Now generally we get a good stretch when this is at more or less the right angle. Inhale, arms up. And then folding forward over that left leg, you can move your torso around a bit until you feel a pigeon-like stretch out here. Okay, now if you look at this, this is essentially pigeon with this leg in front, All right? If I took this leg behind me, now it's pigeon, all right? So it technically is in the same family. We should be able to get the same stretch here as we would in a pigeon pose.
Good. And then let's go ahead and come on up with the next inhale. And we'll start again on the other side. Okay, so legs are out in front of me. And bring the right foot to the inside of the thigh this time. Inhale, arms. And exhale, forward fold. Good. Now grabbing the inside of the foot with the left hand, the outside of the foot with the right hand, using the foot for leverage to roll that right shoulder back. Stretching into the right waist and inside of the left thigh. Good. From there, I simply come forward, a roll forward, and then inhale, sitting myself up. I take my right foot out a little bit, take the left knee, bend it, bring it back this way. Okay. Then inhaling, arms up. Again, I can fold right over the leg, or I can experiment with some different angles. Right here feels pretty good to me, so I'm going to stay here. Again, this is called the deer pose. I've also seen it called the animal pose for some reason. I think some animals, including deer, sleep with their legs in this position. I think that's why it gets that name. All right. Let's inhale, come back up. Let's take those legs out in front of us, give them a little shake. Then inhale, arms out in front, and then as you exhale, slowly coming back onto your back for Shavasana. All right? So we'll take about five minutes in relaxation. If you are at all chilly, I recommend covering yourself with a blanket as it's likely that your uh, core temperature will drop as you relax in Shavasana. I'll uh, ring the gong when it's time to come out, so just relax. You can turn off the music if you've got any music playing, unless it's nice and relaxing.
Okay, so gradually um, bringing yourself around. Okay, making your way up to seated. Take your time, that was no rush. And then um, we usually finish a little bit of chanting, but uh, today, just because of time and um, kind of the unusualness of doing this online, I'm going to skip that step. But uh, if you want to do some chanting, check out my Patreon page. Many of you are already uh, on there. And there's a free chant that I just uploaded uh, in the last day or two. Let me see if I can find the link for that. If you want to do a little chanting with me. Uh, this could be a nice just change of pace uh, from what we normally finish with. I'll put that in the comments here. You want to check that out. It's a new song that I wrote. Uh, it was inspired by the pandemic. So it uses ancient mantras or chants, and I paired that with, um, you know, my own music and melody and stuff. So anyway, check it out. I hope you like it, and uh, I'll hopefully see you in the next class but if not hopefully i'll see you next week again if this time does uh, not work for you let us know we might be able to uh, move it around some um, but uh, hopefully we'll see you next week and or in the yin class which is coming up so namaste everyone thank you for coming and see you soon hopefully